All right, now we're in R2, uncertainty in measurements. Um, all measurements have um, levels of uncertainty and that we just cannot be avoided. Um, we're not God, and so we are going to have imperfections with everything we do. That's why there's a saying to measure twice and cut once for woodworkers and, and such. It's just literally impossible to be perfect. You might... And the difference would be for count if you're counting how many fingers you have, there's no uncertainty. You can count. That's not a measurement, it's a count. Measurements use scales to base things on. Like we have a temperature scale. What is the temperature? We have a, the distance scale, where in America we use inches and feet and miles, and in the rest of the world, they use meters and kilometers and centimeters and such. Um, but you have rulers that are used to measure the size of things. So like, let's pretend I have a paper clip, and I want to know how big it is. I might use a ruler to measure it. Now imagine you have your ruler at home, which generally has rulers generally have inches and half inch marks and quarter inch and eighth inch and sometimes sixteenths and I have some with sixty fourths of inches on there which are obviously very 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 tiny demarcations but imagine you have a ruler that only has inches and each inch is that long what would be the length of that paper clip. Well, you're going to be uncertain because the paper clip is in between one and two inches. And so you don't have a way to know exactly what it is. Um, so it's somewhere, maybe I would guess maybe one and a half, but it might be one and four tenths. It might be one and four or four. 0.5 tenths or something like that. So it's just, there's no way to know. And, but if you had a ruler that had smaller demarcations, and now, okay, so what if I give you that's a half, there's a quarter, there's an eighth, and then it continued down here, then you could make better measurements. And okay, it's not it's not a half an inch and it's more than a quarter of an inch so it's definitely in between there maybe it's another eighth so maybe it's one and three eighths of an inch so it's 1.375 now it might be very close to that but it might still be off if then you might go down to 60 fourths of an inch or you know if you had a microscope you could go to much 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 smaller increments every time those increments get closer together and smaller your uncertainty decreases. The highest level of uncertainty is with no standard to base the measurement on. Or in this case, when we just had one inch for that paper clip, it's very hard to tell what exactly its length is. And so all measurements have uncertainty. We can't avoid it, but we need to understand going forward in any science class, how do we think about the uncertainty in the numbers we're given. How do we minimize the uncertainty or maximize our certainty? All right, so we have precision, we have accuracy, and these are related but different. Precision is how close two or more measurements are to each other, regardless of their true accuracy. Um, for example, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. We know that to be true. But if you put a thermometer in boiling water, it may not show 100 degrees Celsius. It might say 99.4. And if you take another thermometer and it says 99.4, then those two thermometers are very precise. But are they very accurate? Not necessarily. Accuracy is how close a single measurement is to the true or known value. Now, if you had those two thermometers and then you added a third one, and it said 100.0000, 000, 
degrees Celsius for that boiling water, that would be way more accurate than the other two. All three of them together would not necessarily be considered to be precise measurements. Obviously, you would want to use measurements that are both accurate and precise, but sometimes this is just not the case. So this drawing here kind of shows you the difference between accuracy and precision. An accurate and precise measurement has all three of the measurements in this case at the bullseye. Now in the second one here, all three measurements are close together again, but they're not at the dead center of the bullseye as in the first case. So they would be precise still because they're close together but they're not very accurate. And then the last case here is not accurate and not precise. The three measurements are not all close together and none of them are particularly accurate. Obviously, this is data that you would exclude if you figure out that your tools are inaccurate and imprecise. And the next concept is significant figures. Since we have uncertainty in our measurements, what we write down or what we report in the science field um, matters. Um, if you are using too many numbers in a measurement, that's way more precise or way more accurate than the measurement you made, this is not going to work. For example, if I were to measure the length of that paper clip again, so let me draw a new one. All right. And I said that that distance there is one centimeter. What is the length of that paper clip? You might say it's one point, let's say three, four, nine, eight, seven, six, two, one, whatever, centimeters. But would you have any way to know that it is that? And the answer is no, it is impossible. So you wouldn't report that. Now you might actually say, well, it's, definitely one centimeter and it looks like it might be around three-tenths of another centimeter so you might keep that that three is your estimated digit that you're gonna keep it's understood that it is not perfect but it allows the scientist to have some basis that it is definitely more than an inch and it's definitely less than half of an inch and so on and so forth. But that's where the significant figures comes in. So let's go over the rules for significant figures. Uh, so it says here, the measurements must always be reported to the correct number of significant figures because calculated answers often depend on the number of significant figures in the values used in a calculation. In general, a calculated answer cannot be more precise than the least precise measurement from which it was calculated. So if I say, if I say, uh, let's multiply 3.38 times two, um, in a math class, you would get 6.76. That's what you would get in your math class. Now, say we're in chemistry class and you do the same thing basically. Let's say 3.38 centimeters times 2 centimeters. In this class, if I give you that, your answer must be seven square centimeters. And that might seem strange. It might seem worse than the math class. But the reality is 
that this two centimeters has the least number of significant figures. It might be 1.5 centimeters, it might be 2.49. So two is gonna range really from 1.50, zero, dot, 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 to 2.49. Um, let me, so it could be more than seven, it could be less than seven, but all we do know for certain is that it is around seven. So for example, if you do take 2.4999 and you multiply it by 3.38, you actually get 8.4, and I'll just leave this for now, it may not, it's not even gonna matter, but oh, 8.45. So, but if you round 2.4999 to one digit, you do get two, the two. If you rounded 1.5000 to one digit, it would also be two. And 1.5 times the 3.38 is 5.07. So really, we're, we're ranging from 5.07 or so to around 8.45. A huge difference there, which is why significant figures are so important. When What you measure affects everything from then on. We can't be more precise than the least precise measurement that we've made. So the calculated answer must be rounded to make it consistent with the measurements from which it was calculated. And here's the rules. How to determine the number of significant figures. First, all non-zero digits are always significant. That means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you see those, they're significant. Two, zeros between non-zeros are also significant. So for example, if I give you the number 101, then that zero is significant. And that has three significant figures. All right. If I give you the number 1010, actually, let me not do that. 1011 then this would have four significant figures. All right, because the zero being between non-zeros is significant. All right, rule three, leftmost zeros are not significant. And so I could write the number zero thirty. I'm, oh, 30 years old, maybe. But would anyone ever say that? The answer is no, you don't include that. And we'll get to the zeros at the end on the right side in a second, but the leftmost zeros never are significant. And that includes decimals. So if I give you 0 0.35, that would have only two significant figures. All right. If I give you 0 0.000324, that would have only three significant figures because those four numbers, the zeros there, are not significant. They are leading zeros. And part of the reason why this works is if I do take a number like 0 0.00034, and if I write it in scientific notation, it's really 3.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And you can see we don't include the zeros. A scientific notation always has a number followed by a decimal 
and then any of the rest of these significant figures. You never start it with a zero, and you never start it with a decimal. Always a integer, a whole number, followed by the decimal. And so maybe, let's say, we have 123. The proper way to write this in scientific notation would be 123, would be 1 1.23 times 10 to the second power. It is not 12.3 times 10 to the first. You don't do that. It's always one number, then the decimal, always, and then everything else. All right, so next rule here. Write most zeros are significant if they come after a decimal point. Write most is the key thing there. That is probably the most challenging part to understand. What do they mean by write most? And it's a common mistake. So if you're given numbers like 10 or 100, those write most zeros are sometimes significant and sometimes they're not significant. <clears throat> but if they come after a decimal point, then they are significant. So if I just have 0 0.010, this number has two significant figures, the one and the zero, then the rightmost zero. All right, rule five, if the zeros are rightmost and before the decimal, they may or may not be significant, like I had just said. How do we know if the zero and 10 and the two zeros and 100 are significant? Well, it's gonna just be kind of given to you in the context of the question. If you've gotten the number by doing a calculation and that calculation had, let's say is five times two, that's obviously gonna be 10. Each number here has one digit and so therefore one significant figure. And so your answer would only have one significant figure and therefore that zero is not significant. Now, if you have, let's say, um, let's say you have a problem where you have to multiply 2.5 times 3.2 times 1.25. Now when you do that, you're gonna get the answer of 10. Each number here, those are, should be decimals there, each of those numbers has at least two digits. And in fact, that has two and that has two. And we'll learn in a second that you always go with the number with the least number of significant figures because those are the least precise. So that makes that zero significant. So this has two significant figures in that, all right? So those are a couple of ways to figure out whether the zero is insignificant, like right there, or significant, like right here. All right, there's another way to figure that out though. Oops. What if um, you're given scientific notation first? If you're just given 1.0 times 10 to the second, you could write that in standard notation as just 10, and then that has two significant figures in it because the 1.2 times 10 to the second had two significant figures in there. All right. And now the last rule is that when a value is absolute or has been determined by counting, it has an infinite number of significant figures. So if I asked you to count the number of fingers on your hand and you haven't had any you know, life-altering accidents or 
birth defects, you would have five fingers on each hand for a total of 10 fingers. There is no uncertainty about that. You either have 10 or you don't. That number 10, 10 fingers is 100% certain. Therefore, there's no doubt about it, and therefore this has infinitely many significant figures. That symbol there is the symbol for infinity. So now here are some numbers, um, and it asks you to answer how many significant figures are in each measurement. Number one has three significant figures because there's one, two, and three, and there's no zeros. The second number has five significant figures because both of the zeros are in between non-zeros. Number, or the third number has not two, but four significant figures because even though these are rightmost zeros, they come after a decimal and therefore are significant. The, fifth, the fourth number has infinity because meter sticks are things that you can count. If you have 22 of them, you don't have 21 and a half. You don't have 22 and a half or anywhere in between. You've just got 22 meter sticks that you can physically hold in your hand or hands and count them out yourself. It's not two, even though there's only two digits. The fifth number there has how many? Let's look at it. Well, it's got two leftmost zeros, so you would exclude those. And then you have a zero in the middle, so that's going to be significant. And then you have a rightmost zero right there that rightmost zero comes after the decimal and therefore is significant. So this has a total of one, two, three, four significant figures. And then the sixth number there, 98,000 meters, that one has how many? It has two, four, three, or four, or five. It does not have infinity because you can't count a measurement in meters. You can measure a measurement, but you cannot count it. Now, how do we know if it's two, or three, or four, or five? We don't have any context here, so there's no way to know. And if that's the case, you only select what you do know, which is the 98, and therefore it is two significant figures. Again, though, if there's a problem and you have rounded it to 98,000, and the numbers used to get to that answer of the calculation had three or four significant figures or even five, then it could be two, or then it could be three, four, or five significant figures. But with just a number by itself, with no other context, in this case you have to eliminate the zeros, so two. And you might notice that number there is 98,000. There's your context, 98,000 meters. Since it's written in scientific notation, that tells you that that 98,000 meters has four, sorry, not four, five, yeah, I was right, four significant figures. So the only one that is not significant is that one at the end, because there's context being given in scientific notation. All right, so now we have to go through rounding rules, and hopefully you all remember how to round, but 
Um, basically, because you should have passed Math 102 to get to this class, you should know how to do it, but this is a very brief kind of refresher on that. So this says, round off each measurement to the number of significant figures shown in parentheses. Write the answers in scientific notation. So the first number there is 314.721 meters, and it is asking you to round it to four significant figures. So that means you have one, two, three, and four to the seven there. Anytime you have that, what you need to do is take that number, go once more to the right of it, and you look at it. Since we have a two there, you're going to round it down. So that would actually make this 314.7, and technically it would be zero, zero meters. But as written, that still has six significant figures. So you cancel that out, and you just leave the seven. And now it has four significant figures. In the second problem, or second number, we've got 0 0.001775 meters. And it asks you to round it to two significant figures. So, not significant, not significant, not significant. You have one and two significant figures. The next one is a seven. And since that is above five, you're going to round up. So this becomes 0 0.0018 meters. All right, and the next problem here, the next number is 8,792 meters, and it asks you to round it to two significant figures. So we're gonna look right here, one and two significant figures. You go once to the right of that, and it's a nine. So that's, again, gonna round it up. But what's different here is that when you round that, you get 8,800 meters you leave the zeros in there, because otherwise it would just be 88. Alternatively, in scientific notation, you could write it as 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third meters. So you can see that only shows two numbers there, two digits, because it only has two significant figures. And the context of this problem tells you that those zeros here are not significant. All right, and then the fourth number, 87.073 meters, rounding it to three significant figures. You've got one, two, three, a seven's right there. So this becomes 87.1 meters. And then the last number there, oops, 9,009, rounding it to three. So you've got one, two, three, and a nine right there. This makes that number round up to 9,010 meters. And you've got those three significant, and that last one is not significant right there. All right, now finally the rules for determining the number of significant figures after a calculation. We have multiple different ways of doing calculations based on the operators. There is addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, logarithms, exponential notation, um, and so on and so forth. This class, Chemistry 110, will mostly focus on multiplication and division, but there will be some addition and subtraction, especially in this unit, so you will need to be able to understand the rules for this here. Chemistry 111, if you take that, does incorporate logarithms and exponentiation, so you will need to understand that as well, but later on. 
All right, so rules for addition and subtraction. Addition and, and subtraction are really the same thing. Um, if you're trying to quote unquote undo an addition, you would do a subtraction. And so they have the same rules. And as it says here, the answer to a simple addition or subtraction problem or as a step in a series of calculations is to be rounded to the same number of decimal places not digits as the measurement with the fewest number of decimal places. So let me highlight that. And that is key. So, for example, if we have this number here, or this uh, calculation to do here, 12.52 meters plus 349.0 meters plus 8.24 meters. Maybe it's the the perimeter of some triangular shape in somebody's yard. Uh, what you could do, let's see here, is write it out. You've got 12.52 meters plus 349.0 meters plus 8.24 Four meters. When you add that, you get six, seven. The meters are going to stay there. You have a decimal place. Two plus nine is eleven. Plus eight is nineteen. Carry the one. One plus four is five, and you got three right there. So three hundred and fifty-nine point seven six meters. If you were to be doing this in your math class, that would be the answer, but not in this class. If you go back to the rules, you, you'll see again for addition and subtraction, it's the number with the fewest number of decimal places, which is the 349.0. That has one decimal and the other two each have two decimal places. So in reality, this answer is going to be 359.8 meters. So there's your one decimal place. You look to the number to the right of it, and it's a 6. It makes that 7 round up to an 8, and we don't, we don't leave the 6 as a 0. We, just, we exclude it, because otherwise it would give you the wrong number of significant figures. So this is the true answer in this class. And so the rules would apply if there was subtraction, they're just the same. I don't need to do more examples because it's it seems silly to me. It's just adding and subtracting numbers. Now multiplication and division is a little different. There's two steps to the rules here. The first is that the answer to the problem or a step in a series of problems or calculations in a problem is to be rounded to the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest number of significant figures, not decimal places. That decimal place part only works for adding and subtracting. The second thing here says that the position of the decimal point has nothing to do with the rounding process when multiplying and dividing measurements. And we'll see that in a second. So as you can see, I have three problems here, 7.55 meters times 0 0.34 meters. So let's just do that problem and see what we get. So 7.55 meters times 0 0.34 meters. What you get is 5 times 4 is 20. Carry the 2, 5 times 4 is 20, but you add 2 to it, so now it's 22. Carry the 2. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30. Bring down a 0. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry, so you put the 5 in there, carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. And actually, I should erase that. Okay, so we got 16 carry the one there. 
7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22. Then if you wanted to, you could multiply everything by 0, but that's not going to change anything. So add up everything there. 0, 7, 6, 5, and 2. And we've got here 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places. So this means 1, 2, 3, and 4. So your decimal will go after the 2. So this becomes 2.5670. And don't forget you've got meters on each of those. And a meter times a meter is a meter squared. Make sure to remember your units. But that, as written, has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. The answer can only be to two significant figures because 0 0.34 only has two. So you're going to look at the two, five, and then your six. The six is bigger than five, so that makes this round up to 2.6 square meters. And that is your answer. The second problem is 2.10 meters times 0 0.70 meters. So we'll do that. All right. Now 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Bring down a 0. 0 times 7 is 0. 1 times 7 is 7. 2 times 7 is 14. Add everything up, and you get 0, 0, 7, 4, 1. Count up the number of decimal places. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that means you move the decimal place. 1, 2, 3, 4 four times, and so it's 1.4700 meters squared. But when you look at the numbers, 0 0.70 is two significant figures. The rightmost zero is after a decimal, so it does count, and so you, your answer is going to be rounded to two significant to two significant figures, and you've got one, two, you have seven there, which makes the four round up to a five. So 1.5 square meters. All right, problem number three. 2.4526 meters divided by 8.4. Now I can't do this, like, I guess I could do it. Um, I don't, I wouldn't really want to do this by hand, and you shouldn't be doing it because you have calculators, but I will show it. Um, okay, so you would need to do long division for this, and I'm just going to erase that and write it in long division form. It's probably the only time I'm going to do this. The rest of it, I would just use your calculator, and I'm not going to write the wrong numbers in when using the calculator. 2.4526 divided by 8.4. So what you do here, obviously, the first thing is to make sure the number here is a whole number. So really, instead of 8.4, make it 84, which means I have to move the decimal place in there to over here, 24.5. So how many times does 84 go into 24? Zero times. How many times does it go into 245? Two times. So 84 times 2 is 168. 
245 minus 168 is 77. Bring down your 2. 84 goes into 772 9 times. 84 times 9 is 756. 772 minus 56 is 16. Bring down the 6, so you have 166. 84 goes into that one time. 84 times 2 is 168, which we saw above. So we subtract 84 from that, and we get 82, which means we need to write in another 0 and bring that down, and you get 820. And since we have two significant figures there, your answer is going to be to 2. Actually, so we could stop right there. And since we have a 1 right there, your answer is going to be 0 0.29. And when we have meters divided by nothingness, that leaves us with meters, 0 0.29 meters.